This tutorial is going to give a quick overview of most of the tools you'll need to use in Corel Draw. So the first tool on your toolbar is the pick tool, the arrow tool. This is the main tool. This is used for clicking on objects and moving them. Just clicking and dragging across the screen. You'll also notice these little boxes in the corners. Those you can use to scale the image bigger or smaller. You can also skew the image, stretching it. I'm going to hit Control Z to go back. We're squashing it that way. Control Z to go back. And also if you click on the center here once, your tools change to rotate and skew options. So now you can rotate your object one way or another. I'm going to hit Control Z to go back. You can also skew your object. The next tool is the shape tool. It's used for node editing. What you'll need is an object that's ungrouped. So I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup this panda bear. And then click on my shape tool. Click on an object here. And you'll notice these nodes all around your image. And these nodes have points on each side called beziers that you can move to adjust the shape of any object. You can add nodes if you wanted a more bumpy area. You can delete nodes just by double clicking on them. So if there's any object like a piece of clip art that you're using that has a funky shape in it or something weird in it, you can use the shape tool to adjust it. I'm going to go back to my pick tool and then just click and drag to select all these objects of this panda bear and then I'm going to go here and press the group button so that they're all grouped together. That way when I move them it's moving them all at once instead of if it was ungrouped and I try to move it's just going to move the one piece. The next tool is your zoom tool. I usually use the scroller bar on my mouse to zoom in and out but you can also use the zoom tool just click to zoom in hold down shift on your keyboard to zoom out by clicking you can also click and drag around an object to zoom into that area the other thing also is if you're zoomed in like crazy and you don't know how to get back to where everything is you can see just double click on your zoom tool and it'll go back out to your entire artwork. The next tools are freehand and bezier tools for creating custom objects. You probably won't use these very much except for maybe if you're creating a baseball tail. But you can make a, a freehand shape or you can make shapes with straight lines. Pretty simple. And then you can fill these with color if you'd like. The next tools are all of your shape tools. So you have your rectangle tool, pretty standard. You have an ellipse tool, pretty standard. If you want to make a perfect square or a perfect circle, just hold down control on your keyboard and then click and drag to make your square or your circle and it'll be a perfect one. Next you got your polygon tool, which you can change the amount of size on up here in the options. If you click and hold on that you have your star tool and again you can change the amount of sides on your star just up here with these options and also how sharp it is. And you have some various other um, shapes available as well. Next is your text tool which you'll probably use a lot. To use your text tool you just click on it, click once on your screen and then you type your word. Then you go back. The easiest way to edit this word is to go back to your pick tool and then go to your font. Choose something you want to use. You can change the size up here or you can also just click and drag the corner to scale it can also choose a different color. And if you wanted to go back in here to edit again, you can just double click on it. It'll go back to the editing 
area. You can highlight it and change it. Next you have some interactive tools. The one you might want to look at is the interactive envelope tool. You click on your text. Mostly use this for text, but you can use it for objects as well. You click on your interactive envelope tool. You click on an object, and then I would suggest single arc mode, and then just click and drag, holding down control to do both sides at the same time. I go over this in more detail in some of the other tutorials, so you can make kind of a custom text. The other thing in here you might want to take a look at, select your word, go to the interactive drop shadow, and then just click and drag on your object, and you can always adjust this, like so, and you can also use a Pantone color by selecting the color up here, going to other, go into your Pantone palette, and now there's a Pantone color on here. Any version of Corel before X3 doesn't allow you to use drop shadows like this with a Pantone color. Say we don't want that anymore, you just make sure you have your drop shadow tool selected. And you just click this red circle with a slash through it to take it off. The other tool you might want to use from time to time, just depending on your level of print expertise would be the interactive transparency tool. So if I select this rectangle here and then if I go to my interactive transparency tool click and drag on that object it's going to make it kind of see-through or clear and I can adjust this however I see fit and you can change what kind of um, transparency it is as well. The next tools are outline tools and fill tools. Now as you kind of saw already, if uh, you want to fill an object, you can select that object and then you can select a color you want to use. But also you can go in here to your fill tool, click on this first box, and it'll bring up your color selection, and you can choose a color this way, and then also you can go in here into the second option and place a gradient on the design. I'll go over this in more detail in another tutorial. And then you also have your outline tool. So you, if you select your object, you go to your outline, click on the first box. Another option to get there is select your object and double click on this X down here. Then you can select a width. You can type in a number there if you'd like. You can select a color, a type of outline. You want to always do behind fill and scale with image. Now you have an outline on your object. And the last tool here is the interactive fill tool. This is used to adjust gradients really quickly and easily. So if you select an object with a gradient such as this circle, you can go here, interactive fill tool, and you can adjust it manually like so. Some other things you might want to consider looking into. If you click on your object, one of your objects, if you want to mirror it so he's facing the other direction, you can click your mirror option here. There's also your ungroup options up here. There's also weld options up here. So say we want to weld these two together. Select both of them. Hit weld. Now they're one shape. Say we want to trim this from this. Select both objects. Hit trim. Cuts it out of it. And you also have a lot of features up here for arranging your objects. So say we have these three objects here. Say we want the star above and the kind of moon shape above this other shape. We're going to select the star, going to go to arrange, 
border, I'm just going to hit to front of page. That's going to move it in front of everything else. This one, I'm going to go to arrange, order, to front. Now it's in front of the star though, so I'll go to arrange, order, back one, and it's going to move it behind there. Other things up here is your group and ungroup options, converting outlines to objects, converting text to curves. That's pretty much the basic gist of what CorelDRAW offers as far as tools that you would use on a normal daily basis.